Welcome back to Rejoice. It's been a privilege to walk with you in the past. And for those of you who have uh, been a part of the journey in the previous three Rejoice Advent Meditations, uh, welcome back. For those of you who are joining us for the very first Advent, I also want to welcome you. And we want to begin this year just a little bit different because every time that we prepare to serve you, uh, we pray and we ask the Lord how to best serve you and how He wants to inspire us. We get together, Sister Merriman, Father Josh and I, and, and we ask the Holy Spirit to show us what He wants to show us. In years past, we have said things like, if, if Christmas is going to be life-changing, then our preparation for Christmas has to be different, has to be serious. And first of all, for those of us who have had some profound experiences of uh, the Holy Spirit or Mary or Joseph in the past. Praise God for that. But uh, as we have continued to walk with you, uh, we have listened to many of you who have been on the journey with us. In, in the years past, we've, we've, we've allowed us all to walk with people as we prepared for Advent. L last year, we were walking with Mary and Joseph together as a couple. And Years past, we've walked with Mary or we've walked with Joseph, and that has been the person that we have cast our energy on. And, and we really want this year to be different. And if it's going to be different this year, then the person that we are shining a light on is going to be different. And the person that we're focusing on this year is you, me. It's our hearts. That's where this Advent is going to really focus on. And if, if Christmas is really going to be life-changing, then we have to be real with what's really going on in our lives. And I want to welcome you to a real conversation about real life and the real stuff that's going on in our hearts. I share this with you because as we were in conversation with many of us who were able to read uh, the Advent meditations on the Holy Family, a lot may have stirred in our hearts. Uh, uh, Rejoice Advent meditations with the Holy Family uh, very much focused on the beauty of the marriage between Mary and Joseph. And for many readers, not only were they aware of the beauty of the marriage of Mary and Joseph, but it may have also shined light on the grief inside their own earthly marriage with their spouse. And for many of, of us who perhaps were in that journey in Advent meditations with the Holy Family, it elicited a lot of grief that was there. And I just want to welcome you into a conversation this Advent as we focus on our hearts, which for many of us need God in the places in our heart that ache. Sister Mary, I know that uh, as, as we look at the ache in the human heart and and perhaps the ache of many of those who were in Advent meditations with the Holy Family, um, just the encouragement to not be afraid of the ache. Mm -hmm. Oh, those Advent meditations with the Holy Family, they were so piercing in my heart. Oh my gosh, I ugly cried <laughs> several <laughs> times because it really revealed just the beauty of the marriage of Mary and Joseph and, and seeing the love there and also my own desire for a love like that, a, a desire to receive the Lord like that, a desire to be able to give the gift of myself like that. And I, I know that all of us have these these very deep aches, um, aches that aches for intimacy, aches to be seen, aches to be to be known and to be loved and, and to be beheld and, and to give the gift of ourselves. And these things go so very deep. And a lot of times we're afraid of them. We're, we're terribly afraid of the desires that come to our heart, maybe because of how we've lived them in the past. But many times what we don't understand is that the very heart of these desires and the very, very, very heart is the place where Jesus wants to encounter us the most in the deepest longings of our life. When we uh, reflect on the Rejoice program with Mary and Rejoice with Joseph and Rejoice with the Holy Family, we're looking at other people. Uh, but with this Rejoice, we're going to be focusing on ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. That's difficult because we all have aches. We all have unfulfilled desires. We all have longings in our heart. And if we're going to be really honest with ourselves, quite often we don't even like what those aches are. Why am I still aching for this after all these years? Why do I have these desires? And we don't like it. And I think the invitation is to reorient our attention to the face of God mm -hmm. so that we can see the way that God looks at us in the midst of our ache, in the midst of our 
longing in the midst of that which we thirst for and in the midst of that which we ultimately really desire in the depths of our hearts. Yeah, and so I want to, I wanna, with great reverence, invite you into the beauty of what Father Josh just said, right? So really what's in our hearts for, for all of us this Advent is that we might this Advent allow the Lord to very intentionally have access to the places in our life that most need His, His, His love and His presence. Um, which I think requires us to name the fact that we have an ache, which for many people last year um, they were in touch with, or maybe just the circumstances of life since this last year. Uh, there are others who are perhaps like with us in the conversation right now who the language of ache may seem foreign. And, and so I want to I want to set up maybe for us as you're, you're in the conversation with us what that might look like, because I think for a lot of people, Man, especially in our Western culture, especially at this time of year in December and the secular Christmas season, where there is so much attention on provision, right? Uh, you know, so we know lots of people, men and women, husbands and wives, who, who are working hard, who, who have everything that they want, or who are working hard and chasing the things that they materially want, right? And there can be so much attention there that all of a sudden here comes the language of ache. When we go there, then we realize that we are dependent on God. And I, think, I don't think a lot of people like being dependent on God. So either A, I'm attentive to the ache, or I deny the ache because when I am in touch with it, I realize I'm dependent on God. And that can be a scary for, a place for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think all, we all have those places in our hearts where it just seems too terrifying to be dependent where we feel like we've been, where God has failed us before, mm. uh, where people have failed us, and we say to ourselves, we make an inner bound, we say, never again, mm. never again. And then we try to like spend the rest of our life trying to provide for ourselves so we're never put in a place of vulnerability again. And it's, I really believe it's those tender places, especially in this Advent season, that Jesus so deeply wants to come and sit beside us there. Yeah, so I think this is what happens to a lot of us, right? So we, uh, we have moments in our life where um, either because of a liturgical season like Advent or a resource or community conversations with people that we love, right? We are brought to a, a place deeper in our interior life, our spiritual lives, right? We get in touch with, gosh, this is what I want. Mm. And we put that out there. And then sometimes God doesn't meet our expectations. Um, God doesn't answer our prayers how or when we want. Um, or it, it, it just doesn't feel like God's acting, yeah. right, the way we want Him to act. And so here comes the temptation. So this is, this is where the hearts open, right? And then we wait and we wait and we wait on God. So for some of us, it could have happened last year or it could happen in a variety of ways. And here's the temptation, right? Well, you can't trust God. Here comes the temptation, right? God doesn't want what's best for you. Here comes the temptation. Right? You can provide more than God. Right, So it's one thing for us, our hearts to be open. Then comes the temptation. And I think one of the things that we want to do this year that's going to happen for all of us on the pilgrimage is to just shine light on there is a temptation that I think is crippling a lot of Christians. And it's around, does, does God really want what's best for me? Because if we don't believe that God wants what's best for us, then we're not going to stay still in the wait, or we're not going to expose our hearts to Him with great trust. Mm. Which makes sense, because if I don't trust you, why would I open my heart to you? Mm. Like, you know, we're all friends. I trust you guys very much, and so I know that, you know, if you ask something of me or if we had a conversation, I would trust you, because, you know, this is where we're going. But if, like, you don't trust somebody, and you can't mm. force yourself to trust somebody, it's something that we learn by opening our hearts and finding that person is trustworthy, right? When we take a risk, mm -hmm. um, I think, that, that, yeah, those places of, of all of us, myself included, have parts of my heart where I don't, I don't trust God. I don't, I don't believe he is who he says he is. And so it's in those places where I want to be like, nope, I'm doing it myself. And it's, we're marvelously, wonderfully broken. <laughs> it's just like, oh gosh, I see that in my like, poverty. Like, yeah, we, we have poverty. to have someone to accompany us, to yeah. walk with us, because we can't do it on our own, right? Like I, I'm always drawn to the image of the apostles on the boat. I know this is not Advent season, but they're on this boat. And like, that's what they knew. They knew the boat. They knew Jesus on the boat with them. They knew each other. That's where they worshiped, studied, prayed, lived life together. And then all of a sudden, a storm's happening, and Jesus ain't on the boat no more. He's on the water, and he's like, I'm on the water. 
So you're going to come to me or not? And I'm, I'm, Peter walked to him, but the others just held on to the boat. They held on to what they were used to. And I think some of us, we are scared to let go of the boat and go into the unknown because what if? Like, what if it doesn't work for me? I, I know it worked for this saint, but in my life, I've never seen God act in a way like that for me. And so I don't think I can trust. So we just stay in, our, in the place that's comfortable for us, but, but we don't grow in comfort. And I think what, what's going to happen if we, if we really get real in our hearts this Advent and we are in touch with where we really need God, then as we are in the, the, the meditations and we're meeting the people, seeing the places where we're in the events of that very first Advent, then I think it actually can speak to the desire to trust God because I think one of two things happen when our hearts are open and, 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 and we don't see God acting. Either our hearts will close or what we'll do is we'll just go back up to the surface. And I think that the first thing I just want to encourage people is, is around the temptation of the heart closing. Because I think when we don't see God moving, um, especially those who don't feel safe, our hearts can close. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a perennial temptation by the tempter is that God is not who he says he is, that you can't trust him, he doesn't have your best good, so you better wall that off and, and close it off. And I think, I know just especially in my heart as a woman, you know, especially when I think of areas of intimacy or really receiving others or just the places in my heart where I desire the Lord more deeply, when it seems like other people aren't gonna come through for me or God, you know, is still doing what I don't understand, it's my temptation is to be like, mm, no, I'm not gonna trust you anymore. I'm not gonna let you into these places. And it's like to close the, the door of the garden. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, it seems safer that way, but all I do is I wall myself off in isolation. So like that's, it's that risk of, Lord, I, I, I know you're good and I want to believe you're good and I, I, I need you to help me here. Please come and help me keep my heart open. Yeah, because, all right, so for what happens when, when our hearts close, right? Here comes Christmas and the power of God and the reality of God in the flesh. And it, it, it's not necessarily like, like our hearts are closed on purpose, but that grace is just hitting a blocked door in our hearts, right? And, and, and there are other graces in our life, but where we really need God the most, we've walled off our hearts because we didn't feel safe. And the Christmas grace, it can't penetrate or, or fill our hearts in a very uh, life-changing way, you might say. I think the other temptation, uh, Father Josh, is when um, maybe we're not, we're not going to close off our hearts, but we're just going to go back up to live in our sufficient life oh, yeah. or just a, 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 a life focused on materialism. And oftentimes we don't even notice we're doing that. I don't think it's always like a, a cognitive sure. thing. Like I'm choosing to do this. I think it's we just get tired of waiting with God. And so we go back to busyness. We go back to noise. We go back to doing good things, especially for those of us in ministry. I would do so many different events and so many different things to help people out to avoid like the fact that the Lord wants me to sit there with him. And it's just too uncomfortable to sit there because when I sit there, when I wait for him, I have to acknowledge that even as a priest, I still don't always trust. And I'm supposed to trust. I had eight years of seminary formation. Mm -hmm. I'm ordained a priest. But there are still times where I struggle with God. And to avoid that struggle, I could just, without even thinking about it, so get plugged into every other good thing. So I think the invitation from the Lord is, as opposed to pulling away and running away and doing a bunch of really good things, is to, is to enter into that quiet space with him and wait with him. Like, like a waiter at a restaurant will come and wait for you. Like they, they're, their waiting is not passive, it's active. They consistently and intentionally will come up to their customer and say, what can I get for you? How can I serve you? They're, they're with the other person. And I believe that's where God is inviting all of us. Whenever we are aware of the ache, whenever we are aware of, um, of the fact that we are resisting going places that we are uncomfortable going uh, because we are tired or because we are so busy or because we feel like we have so many demands in our life on us already, um, the Lord is saying, just wait with me in this moment a little bit longer. And I think for those of us who do wait with Him, um, eventually when it's best for us, and only God knows that, uh, we, we do see the, 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 the ache um, satiated. We do experience the desire fulfilled. We do experience the thirst being quenched, but it only happens if we lean into the weight. Which I think is one of the things that we'll discover this Advent is um, um, the way that the journal is designed. It's going to teach us um, how to engage with the Lord in the weight and discover lots of things that are in our hearts as we are waiting. 
Um, and so um, I, I'm excited about that, but I think it goes back also to desire. Mm. So I think that's really important. One of the things that's going to rise in, the, in our hearts, right, if we are attentive to our hearts, as we're waiting on the Lord, two things will, will, will rise in the human heart. The first is the deepest desires of our heart and eventually the desires of God. But maybe I, I think, Sister Miriam, just to speak to the heart that, that, that is in touch with the deepest desires as they're waiting. Mm -hmm. Well, to desire is, is part of what it means to be human, right? Because it's a part of an echo, a, a calling from eternity. And we're often afraid of our own desires. I think we're terrified of them. And, mm -hmm. Or sometimes we think that we're the ones initiating, especially when we talk about God. We're, we're the ones initiating desire. And, and the truth is, is that, that God is just so gracious and so kind in who He is, is that He first desires us. Mm -hmm. And so that reality of of, oh, my desire really, even if it's very, very small, all that is is a response to, to His desire and all the Lord wishes to do. You know, we talk about love is not a battle of wills or a competition of wills or a destruction of your will. Love is a union of wills. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's the both and of, it, and, and it's in the very places we find resistance. That's the thing, because even now I'm sure as people are watching this, they're, they're feeling both desire and both like, ugh, like the push-pull. And, and just to even breathe into those places of resistance, of, of the desire for whatever that is, and just to allow the Lord to come into these places. And that, the only way is through. That, that's how transformation takes place. It's the union of desire, where the Lord waits for us to bring us into communion with Him. It's really very simple. Yeah, so I love the push-pull, right? So here I am, I'm watching this video, and I'm in this conversation, and I am in touch with what I really want is a healed marriage. What I really want is uh, my addictions to be gone. What I really want is my sin to be just like out of my life. What I really want is um, the Lord to be to be concrete and real. Like if people are, are intentionally specific, about naming what they want. There can also be the resistance, mm -hmm. right? And so what I have found is that we need to not be afraid of the resistance. Mm -hmm. Okay, here I'm resistant, right? I don't want to go there with the Lord. And then it's important, I think, for us to remember who we're talking to mm -hmm. or, or what we're talking about. And that is this God who came at Christmas because he wanted to. We were talking earlier about uh, yeah. the meditations that really spoke to your heart. And yeah, yeah. but God wanted God to be God chose to come to us, right? He didn't have to come to us. He chose, he wanted to dwell with Mary. He wanted to speak to, to Joseph in his sleep. He wants to be with us because he desires us at all times, not just on church for an hour on Sunday, but God desires to be invited into every aspect of our life. One of the the, the most beautiful things I heard from one of my friends in spiritual direction uh, with his spiritual director was this. His director said, all right, what's the one thing you don't want to talk about today? Mm. Like, let's let's talk about that, because I want you to see the way that God delights you in that, in that place of ugh, whatever it is like. That's where God wants to encounter you the most right now, because we worship a God who delights in us, who sees us. Mm -hmm who knows everything about us and who still chooses to love us mm -hmm. and to want to abide in a relationship with us. And so that's one of the greatest gifts of Advent is that we encounter a God uh, in Jesus who, who chose to, to come and be with us right here, wherever we're at, not where we want to be, mm -hmm. not where we could be, would be, or should be, but where we are is where he wants to be which means we need to be specific about naming where we need a Savior. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us right now, every single one of us has a place in our life where we need Christ the most, mm -hmm. where, where we need Him. And I often, I was th sharing with you guys earlier, often when I receive Holy Communion, I invite Jesus to bring His oil and wine in the one place I need it the most, mm -hmm. where I'm afraid of being abandoned, where I don't want to, to face my desire here, where I, st yeah, the places that we often don't want to talk about. These are the very places um, where the Lord wants to come. And so to be very specific in naming that, even if it's scary, is going to be the way through for us so the Lord can be invited into these places to, to reveal His heart to us there. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and so like, here's the good news for all of us. Um, Jesus Christ was born at the end of this Advent pilgrimage in a very messy stable. <laughs> it, it wasn't a hospital. It wasn't a, uh, an inn. Uh, God chose to be born. He chose to manifest His glory in a very messy place on the outskirts of Bethlehem. And this Christmas, God wants, you might say, to be born 
in the places in your heart where you need God the most. And I'm excited about the journey that we are, are going to be on because I believe in the God that we're preparing for and I believe in all those those people that we're going to meet on this Advent pilgrimage and the places that influence them and the events that were there that give us permission and teach us how to invite God in to every aspect of life, especially the places where we need Him the most. And I'm excited about what God did in their life as an indication of what God might do in your life. And it starts now. It starts with us naming right now where we need God the most. And so I want to pray with you, uh, not only in the the meditations that await us in the journal, but but right now. And as we pray, I'm just going to invite you into trusting a God who's been with us every step along the way and invite you into an experience of just allowing the Lord to name for you the places where He wants to touch your heart the most. So let's pray together now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, we give you permission in this Advent to cast your gaze upon us so that we might be the person front and center in this Advent story. And that we might learn from the other people of the very first Advent And that this pilgrimage and the places, people, and events of that very first Advent would actually dispose our hearts, would make it easier for us. Father, I I pray that this Advent would be different because of the grace that is given to every one of us to go there with you. Lord, if there are places that are hurting in people's lives, may that be what you speak to this Advent. If there are people who have given up on allowing you into places in our hearts, Lord, I pray for miracles in their lives this Advent. Lord, we surrender to you the hearts of those who may feel unsafe in being at that depth, and we surrender to you the hearts of those who might be tempted into overactivity or to lack of waiting. And Jesus, I just ask in your very gentle way, in your loving way, that for all of us at this very moment, that you would just reveal the one place in our hearts where we need you the most. I pray, Lord, you would give us the courage just to not self-censor, not to push you away, but just please in your gentle way, just gently reveal the place where we need you the most, the place that you'd most like to bring to yourself this Advent season. God, I said you give us the grace to to see ourselves the way that you see us, to know ourselves the way that you know us, to delight in ourselves the way that you delight in us, and to love ourselves the way that you love us. Where we are resistant, Lord, where we feel like we are just so overwhelmed right now, pulled in so many different directions, I ask that you give us the grace to slow down, to find a place in a space that is quiet, so that we can reorient our attention to your face on us right now in the present moment. Be loved by you who are Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Father, I ask that you would anoint our hearts all over again, pour forth the, the power of your love. And Father, in this, in this pilgrimage that we take together in this Advent season, I ask that there would be just a removal of anything that would make it hard for us, anything that would try to discourage us or tempt us, Lord, I ask that that would be removed from our lives now. Teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray in such a way that our prayers are personal in our revelation to you and personal in our hearing from you, speaking to the very places in our lives that we need you the most. 
Give us courage to stay still. Give us hearts that are receptive. And may this Advent pilgrimage be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.